What's up? It's Johnny from Carcosa and Angel Maker, and you're watching Richard Metal Fan. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Richard Metal Fan Interviews. This is episode number 142. And today's guest, we're talking to Johnny Chardulo. He is the guitarist for the band Angel Maker, a deathcore band from Vancouver, Canada. He's also the lead singer for the band Carcosa, another deathcore band from uh, Vancouver, as well as he also is in a band, another band called Bastion. Today we're going to be talking to him about what got him into metal and pretty much going, going through his discography and talking about like differences between being a vocalist versus being a guitarist. And so without further ado, let's go talk to Johnny. So what's up guys? I'm here with Ch Johnny Chardulo from Carcosa, Angel Maker, and Bastion probably a, a plethora of other bands I probably don't even know about. <laughs> so how are you doing, man? Good, man. How are you? Doing pretty good. I've been been wondering how to pronounce your last name. I had to look up look up a video on how to, how to say it before I started this interview, and I pretty much nailed it. You did, yeah. Chardulo. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, apparently it's like Italian or something. It is Italian, yeah. C-I-A in Italian is pronounced with the C-H. Yeah, that's so weird. I, I, because for the longest time, I was wondering, how is it? Is it Ciarodulo or Ciarodulo? No, oh, but now it's Chardulo. Correct. Oh, awesome. So, kind of like the format is, I want to do like a like a like talk about like your journey as an artist from where you started to now, and to talk about like your bands. But take it back to young Johnny. So, growing up, what were the first bands that got you into metal, and what made you want to play guitar, and also want to make what makes you want to be a vocalist? It's a good question. Um, when I was a kid, I used to watch um, this music program in Canada called Much Music. I've heard of it. And uh, it, it played like a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's cool. It was just like music videos and stuff and had stuff like video on trial. It was really cool. But uh, 11 o'clock every Friday night was Much Loud, which was basically the alternative stuff like metal and hardcore and all that kind of stuff. And I remember coming across um, Before I Forget by Slipknot. That was probably one of the first, like, really heavy things I heard. And I thought it was really cool and interesting. And I started to dive into heavy music a little bit more. Before that, I was listening to bands like Billy Talon, Alexis on Fire, kind of, like, getting close to metal, but not there yet. And um, so I started with Slipknot. And then I kind of, I went the extreme way where I started listening to extreme death metal first, like, Bands like Vital Remains, Cannibal Corpse, Deicide, that kind oh, of yeah. stuff. And uh, that was where my metal journey started. And I was like, this has to be the most crazy, heaviest shit of all time. And uh, nothing else can touch it, you know. And then as I started to get a little bit older, you know, near middle school, I, I discovered Kill Switch Engage. And I was like, oh, metalcore is really cool, too. So and then I started going softer, I guess. But I, I always had like that blend of, you know, MySpace era, Deathcore. And then metalcore and death metal when I was younger. But yeah. And in doing that, that made me kind of want to learn guitar in a new way as well. Because I had basically just been playing like Green Day riffs or blues like Stevie Ray Vaughan or something like that. But hearing bands like Cannibal Corpse, I really wanted to start to learn how to play that stuff. And that was basically the same thing with vocals as well. Uh, listening to bands like Whitechapel. Uh, you know, the Somatic Defilement EP when it came out, I was like, I want to sound like that. So I just tried my best to sound like that. And the rest was history. That's awesome. Because I know, like, here in America, there's also this thing called Fuse, which I guess is kind of like like the Much Music in Canada. That's how I discovered, like, a lot of the band bands I've heard of, like, of course, Slipknot not in bands like that like i say slipknot were like the first like i guess like extreme band i've heard heard when i was like 12 13 that would later get me into like death metal or even black metal as i got older during that during, I feel for like, sure yeah i feel like that slipknot especially like that whole new metal era era because i always say if it wasn't for like lincoln park's hybrid theory album i wouldn't have gotten into cannibal corpse so it's kind of funny how it, how you the the things that, that a lot of people would like shit on like i always hate like metal leaders that always like talk shit about about like new metal so i'm always telling them it's like okay so you're telling me that you're like five years old you're like walking to school with your lunchbox listening to to end the nightside clips by emperor come on nah it's just everyone's front they like to flex yeah yeah and i have no shame shame of that of liking that that album from hybrid theory but also 
so of course getting into like the death metal stuff like i love cannibal corpse like them and black dahlia murder were like my gateways into death metal metal as a teenager and then before getting into like more yeah. extreme stuff as i got older yeah it's the same for me awesome and so i so kind of like going 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 back like i believe your first band was called bastion or was there any other bands before that so i uh i really hadn't played a a note in a metal band until i went to college um i went to music school and started a band there called the residents uh we were like a progressive gent we were like a progressive gent kind of band and uh that was my first time playing metal uh, besides that, I I played country music for about eight years, um, all the way from high school through to college and after. Um, and then I joined a local band in Vancouver called Galactic Pegasus, who would eventually turn into Carcosa. Um, and during that time we were turning into Carcosa, I had also joined Bastion um, during that time to uh, help write some new music and stuff like that. And then Angel Maker happened at the same time. So pretty much all three of those bands kind of all happened at a very similar time but yeah technically my first first metal band was called the residents awesome and tell me about like bastion because i don't think really nobody ever really talks ab about about it and i'm always like curious to know more about it yeah for sure so bastion's been around for a little bit um they had an original vocalist before that they parted ways with kind of like just before covid ish probably like a year before and um they wanted a new vocalist and they asked if I would be interested in doing it. And I, I accepted because I really kind of wanted to do a project that was a little bit more metalcore so that I could maybe sing more than scream. Uh, so that was kind of like my outlet for my metalcore side. So yeah, I joined Bastion. We recorded a few songs. We actually have like pretty much a whole album done. We're just kind of waiting to finalize mixes and stuff. Um, the guitar player of the band, his name is Ty Kingston, and he was the producer for Carcosa as well. He mixed all of our stuff up until now. Um, he got in a motorcycle accident, and it really kind of halted things uh, oh, for Bastion. Um, he's 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 fine. He's okay now. He's he's recovering. It was you know he really hurt himself, but uh, it really put like mixing and doing all of that on the back burner until he felt good and okay. Um, but we do have stuff ready to go we're just kind of waiting around and waiting for for ty to feel better and it's a, it's a long recovery for him but he's doing great but yeah that's that's kind of it so we don't really talk about bastion that much because it's kind of just been been quiet for a little bit yeah because i've i've checked out so there's some some songs like i love nothing but ash is pretty much the first song i heard and i was like wow this is awesome and i know the i think the last thing you did was you did that slipknot cover of people equal shit and i just think it's a fucking beastly song yeah, yeah. That one was really fun. Yeah, it's like one of my favorite Slipknot songs. Like, I still think, like, in my opinion, Iowa is probably their best album to date. Like, nothing will ever top that. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. And then, kind of, like, going into also Carcosa, so because I I actually, I recently got into you guys, like, about a year or so ago. I just knew you from Andrew Baina, Baina which, Baina, which, of course, I've watched his YouTube videos for a while. So, tell me about, like, how did you two meet and decide to start up Carcosa? So <clears throat> this kind of goes back to what I was saying before, um, where I, I'm not originally from uh, Vancouver, where Andrew and everybody is from. I'm originally from a town in the in interior of BC called Penticton. And um, I went to college in a place called Nelson. And after that, I moved to Vancouver and I was really hoping to meet guys in bands. Like I was listening to Galactic Pegasus and Angel Maker and I was like, oh, I hope I get to meet these people or see them play or whatever. And um, how I started talking to Andrew was he made a post on Facebook saying, oh, I want to cover Uptown Funk by uh, Bruno Mars. And I wow. had actually done one already uh, on my own just because I felt like doing it. And I messaged him and I was like, hey, I did this. And he's like, oh, wow, cool. Like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I knew that I knew that his band at the time parted ways with their bass player. And I had been playing bass in a country band and stuff. And I messaged him and I said, hey, like, if your band is looking for a bassist, I'm down to do it or whatever. And they discussed and they let me audition and I did and I got in the band. So GP, Galactic Pegasus existed for, you know, from 
when I joined in 2014 up until we ended the band uh, in 2019. Um, so that's like how long Andrew and I knew each other and played music with each other for, you know, quite a long time before we decided to fully rebrand uh, Galactic Pegasus into Carcosa. And the reason why we ended up doing that is because we were kind of just done with the whole Gent thing. Like the the scene of Gent was pretty toxic at the time. We didn't really like the music we were writing. We had a lot of member changes that we weren't, you know, we were burnt out on it. And we decided that we wanted to change our genre and change our marketing and start from scratch entirely. So Carcosa was, was born out of that. Yeah, and I I loved like the the one EP P and the anthology, which I guess is a full length. Like I that's definitely my my introduction. I was like, wow, this wow, wow. What was like the thought process and like the recording of making anthology? So anthology, I guess you could kind of say like we we cheated our way into a full length because we essentially just combined um, absent into other songs that we had written and made it a full length uh, because we're a new band. Not everybody had heard all the new songs or the old songs. So we basically just redid the old songs with a fresh coat of paint and then had features on every song. Yeah. So those songs were, were done and we, we had the help of some really good friends that wanted to, to feature and it was really nice of them to do that. And then, um, yeah. So all the other songs too, we had like a mission statement when we started the band that we wanted to try and write and record everything together in the same room. And for the most part, we did that for a lot of the songs like the void and all that. Um, and we recorded and self produced for the most part, everything on our own. Andrew recorded all the guitars at his place. Cooper did all the post effects at his. And then I did all the vocals at my place. And then we sent all the stems off to tie to mix. Right. And that was pretty much it. That's, that's essentially how it happened. Awesome. And how'd you end up working with all of the guest features? Like I know you got, got my boy Taylor from Left to Suffer. You got got Ricky from Up Sulfur. How'd you end up ho hooking up with all all these guest features on on the album? Well, it was kind of it was great because everybody that we asked was basically already our friends. So it just kind of felt like a fun thing to do as friends, you know. Uh Ricky had been talking to me directly. Um kind of throughout COVID just because of Sulphur was starting again or of Sulphur was starting and he was getting back into music and he was listening to a lot of the new bands and luckily we were one of them and I started talking to him and we became friends. And then, you know, Taylor I've always supported with what he does as well. And I'm a huge reflections fan. So asking Jake Wolf was, was really cool for me. And uh, they all said yes, which was great. It just kind of, I just messaged people and I asked them and they said, yes. It was the same thing with Kyle from Brand. They all just kind of wanted to do it, so it was a, a great honor of uh, from them. Yeah, yeah, and I remember seeing like like of course if, I think you blew up from like like YouTube and of course TikTok. Talk like did like did you feel like you 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 were kind of like surprised like with all like the reception and the response you gotten from Carcosa? Yeah, yeah, it was it was definitely a surprise, and it was. Uh, a, it was a gamble to do what we did um, with the full rebrand, especially with COVID happening. We decided, you know, that nobody was really doing anything in this time. Maybe this is the best time for us to come out. And it could have gone the either either way where we could have come out and nobody would have given a shit. Or we come out and people aren't doing anything and they're forced to listen to our music. Um, but yeah, we were definitely su surprised by the response. We we felt really good about it because, you know, we really weren't happy with what was happening with our old band. So the fact that this finally paid off, we felt we felt really good about it. And it's been kind of interesting, too, because with TikTok, uh, what, with what Andrew and I do, people still don't really know, like, we do that. Like, people who watch us on TikTok don't know that we have a band. People who follow Carcosa don't know that we have TikTok. And there's some people that do, but there's, like, two very different audiences. Yeah. And we kind of did that on purpose because we didn't really want to blend too many of that together. But we also did see direct correlation from TikTok to Carcosa streams. So people were finding us on TikTok and listening to Carcosa. So that crossover was happening, um, but a little bit more rare, I would say. So yeah, yeah, and I agree. Agree. I feel like TikTok now. Now I feel like it's helped a lot of like like bands or artists, even like like celebrities, like really help help them like like get noticed and like like rise up. 
I agree. It, it helped us immensely and we'll always be thankful to the platform for that. Yeah, yeah. For the for a long time, I used to think I always get those like like ads on YouTube, and I was like like I, like it would be annoying. But now I'm like, oh, I get it. It's sort of like a way to express. I always feel like like, like um if you remember like Vine back in the day, they had, like those little seven second videos. Oh yeah. I feel like like TikTok is sort of like the the evolution from that. Oh, I would agree entirely. And like TikTok is awesome for music discovery as well. Like I've found a lot of artists over the past, you know, two, three years from TikTok, just from discovering them and, you know, on my For You page, basically. So it's really good for that, too, just finding new music and bands and artists. Yeah. And then, of course, eventually you did, like, your first ever ever tour, like, like earlier this year with within Destruction. Shen, how did that tour come to be? Yep. And were you, like, nervous at all, like, hitting the road with Carcosa for the first time? So how it came to be is... So Angel Maker and Carcosa both have the same booking agent. And um, we had been trying to basically book something around uh, Angel Maker tours that were already booked. So I was really trying hard to find something that worked perfectly for us. And um, the Angel Maker boys were going to Europe in January. And there wasn't enough room for me on the bus anyways. So there was that whole gap of time where I wasn't doing anything. And the Within Destruction tour was in that time. So I was like, perfect, let's go for that. We accepted the offer and, and away we go. Um, I The one thing that I was nervous about is, you know, I had toured the US with Angel Maker, but I had no idea what it would be like touring with Carcosa. Like, there was obviously interest and people would come up to me and say, when is Carcosa coming? But, you know, you can only take that with a grain of salt. Like, people say things all the time or sometimes numbers don't translate, you know, to live ticket sales. Uh, so I was kind of nervous about that. Um, but once we started getting into the tour and like the first five shows, we were like, okay, like this makes sense. This was worth it. You know, for a Canadian band to tour the U S it's a big financial investment. And we, I was more worried about like recouping our losses and stuff like that. And we, we of course did, which was great, but that was kind of the only thing I was nervous about. Like I was so pumped to play the shows with, with the boys and, and have a good time. So, yeah. Yeah, and did you find, like, differences, like, being a vocalist on stage versus playing guitar? Oh, yeah, big time. Um, I have to talk to people, which is uh, sometimes difficult. I mean, if anyone has seen me live now, they know that I pretty much just bullshit my way through talking to the crowd. I just make stuff up <laughs> and just yeah. talk about what I see. But, you know, I have I have a good time, and I just – I like to have fun, and – you know, not everything has to be super serious all the time. I just, I like to joke around and make everybody feel light and feel welcome. So, yeah. Yeah. Got it. Got to let, God can't take yourself too seriously. You just, you're allowed to have like a little bit of fun, but you take what you, you, you do seriously, yeah. but you don't take yourself seriously at the same time. Very much correct. Yeah. And then kind of like, I want to talk about like ain't joining up Angel Maker because, I, because how did you end up getting to know like, 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 like all the other guys? guys like like casey mike and everybody mm -hmm. so this all kind of reverts back to when i first moved to the city um i joined galactic pegasus and we were playing a lot of local shows and festivals with angel maker and that's how i started to get to know the guys um i lived really close to mike uh colton and casey or, and uh cole in north vancouver so i saw them a lot i'd hang out at mike's place a lot and i really got to know everybody as friends and we were just all really good friends together. And um, I ended up running a theater a venue in Vancouver called the Vogue Theater. And I had all of those guys work with me as well as stage crew. So we spent a lot of time working together as well and just talking and, you know, asking how each other's bands are doing and tours and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then COVID happened. And uh, Colton wanted to write a full length record because they had so much time. And... Colton had essentially been writing a lot of the stuff on his own. He obviously had um, Matt come in and do a lot of the leads, but he was doing a majority of the songwriting himself. And uh, he asked me during COVID if I would be interested in joining the project to help him write a full length record. And uh, I agreed immediately because I'm like, yeah, let's fucking go. Let's do it. And uh, yeah, that was, that was kind of it. I, you know, have been in the band for almost three years now, which is hard to believe, but the first two years were essentially in COVID, yeah. which was which was kind of crazy. We you know we finished a record and we put it out, and then only 
recently did we get to start touring so yeah and it's, I, it's been crazy yeah and of course that would be be sanctum which is definitely one of my favorite albums from last year here well we're nice. kind of like 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 looking at like the other albums be like like the, i this is how i should play or like the other guys want you to like bring like your own style into angel maker yeah it was kind of a lot of pressure um because i really uh i really loved colton's songwriting and when i joined the band i essentially studied colton's songwriting like very thoroughly um because i didn't want to come into the band and then completely change the sound and or ruin it for people or you know taint the the idea of what angel maker is for a lot of people i kind of wanted to continue what colton was doing but put a fresh coat of paint on it with my own writing style and i think i did that all right like i don't think it's too jarring i don't think the songs are too different but you know i definitely like had a lot of like internal pressure on myself being like oh fuck i can't change this too much or or anything like that but but yeah i'm feeling i'm feeling good about it now i'm, I'm very proud of what we ended up doing with sanctum yeah, because especially like Slaughter, Creator's Conscience, Vengeance, like all all of this these songs are just bangers. Hell yeah, thank you. Because because I know like you off like the heavy stuff and you have melodic melodic el elements. I know though there's you guys there's now like seven people in the band. Like you might as well just be like Deathcore Slipknot with like so many members. <laughs> members. So so there's like <laughs> yeah exactly so, yeah. So, do, so do, like do, so like everybody like have like their own style that they bring into Angel Maker. Uh, yeah, I mean, with so many people, everybody brings in a different influence, you know? Like, I, I definitely come from a background of, of metalcore and, you know, MySpace era deathcore. Uh, Colton is very much the same, but he's also into a lot of brutal death, noise, and grind. That's really his thing as well. And we all have, like, a combined knowledge of slam. So slam is, like, the connective glue for everybody. And then I call Mike the deathcore historian because that's exactly what he is. Uh, he knows everything about Deathcore and a lot of the bands that you would never even think of that were real. He knows about them kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Casey is very much the same. Uh, he's more of like a early Parkway Drive metalcore kind of guy, but still listens to a lot of different music and, and all that kind of stuff. Cole Cole is very much uh, like Avenged Sevenfold slash like raw or prog stuff like Leprous and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then having Steven in the band is awesome too because Steven's like a tech death deathcore kind of guy as well which really blends with everyone and uh matt is like matt's like an 80s hair metal kind of guy in a way he really brings wow. that that feel in his solos he's a huge eddie van halen fan so a lot of the feel and behind his solos are from like his roots of like uh classic rock and blues and all that kind of stuff so so everybody's got different little flavors that make us who we are i think yeah now having a being like three guitars like you kind of kind of like I, like have like the different like elements like i consider y'all could be like like white chapel like iron maiden like having bands with like three guitar players to, that definitely have you could definitely tell like oh that oh like who's playing what yeah yeah exactly and we're trying to utilize everybody for their own skills as well yeah yeah and especially like one of my favorite songs i believe is exit signs uh, i believe was the last song on here here and i think, think you did like a little bit of clean vocals on that that which i think you have and i've heard like like the one acoustic cover you did of counterparts and i think you have like a really great voice i hope maybe you could sing a little bit more at the angel maker like add a little bit of like clean singing but not like like overdo it so that people's like what the fuck yeah 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 that was a, a thank you by the way um but uh that was a tough one and it was actually not my idea it was mike's idea because the way he writes choruses is he writes them as if you could sing them. Like, if you can sing the chorus of a, you know, a deathcore song, then you kind of have that hook in there. But the way that Mike does it is he makes it singable and then screams it. But for that one specifically, he was like, I think it would sound good if there was, like, a quiet layer of, of clean singing. I was shocked that he said that, but I agreed. I'm like, yeah, for sure. Like, Angel Maker with clean vocals is kind of crazy. I don't know if it's, like a trend we're going to keep following. I, I feel as though we'll probably always remain primarily screaming vocals. Like like you said, if, if I am going to do anything more, it would probably just be like padding or extra stuff. But I could see myself singing in Carcosa before singing in Angel Maker. Yeah. 
yeah def definitely and i think you have like like i said have a really great vo voice like i know you have like the use great usages of like your singing voice and then your of course your screaming voice i feel like it also like conveys like a different emotion shouldn't like depending on the vocal style like somehow like the clean singing you can't really express anything with like the harsh vocals or vice versa yeah i agree totally and sort of and sort of like since it has been over a year since sanctum has been released have you all started ideas for the next angel maker album oh yeah definitely um we actually just got back from a week writing session out on vancouver island at uh, colton's place where we were finalizing some songs so we have we have a lot of material ready to rip we just uh just gotta get in the studio at some point and get it done but but yeah, we got a lot of stuff done. Tons of stuff. Awesome. And kind of kind of always a little bit to sort of wrap wrap thing, things up. I'm always curious about like your gear. Like I want to know what kind of guitars you use, like strings, pedals, amplifiers, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, so for guitars, for the past few years, I have been working directly with Aristides uh, from the Netherlands. Uh, the guitars are made completely out of a composite material called Arium. So not a single piece of the guitar is made of wood. It's all made out of this composite material. Wow. And the reason why I like using them specifically for tour is because they don't, um, they resonate like wood does, but they don't react like wood does. So they aren't affected by the weather. I don't have to worry about adjusting my truss rod or any of that. It stays perfectly, doesn't work at all. Um, in my custom, my pink 070, I have uh, cold sweat uh, bare knuckle pickups. I have an Evertune bridge, which is great. It saves my life. I don't ever have to worry about tuning on tour, which is fucking awesome. Um, I'm endorsed by Ernie Ball Strings uh, for the tunings that we use in Angel Maker, which is only one. We only play drop A. I have uh, 10 to 60s, which is great. Um, we are endorsed by Neural DSP. So we use all of their plugins for demoing and studio, and we also use the Quad Cortex Live. Um, that's kind of it for Angel Maker, I believe. Oh, I use Happy Cables as well, a uh, custom cable company. Um, for Carcosa, we are endorsed by Lewitt Microphones, so I use the Lewitt mics for that. Also work with Happy Cables as well. I have a custom yellow XLR cable. Um, I actually used my Quad Cortex for a vocal monitoring unit uh, live, which was great. I just sent a dry DI signal out to front of house. Um, I've been using a wireless system called the X Vive, which is just like a little uh, in your monitor system, which is great. And now both bands, Angel Maker and Carcosa, work with 64 Audio for our in ear monitors. So I think that's everything. It's a lot of stuff, but yeah, but that should yeah. be it. That's awesome. And so, so before we go, I just want to thank you for this interview. It's great to be able to talk with you. It's just anything else with the Angel Maker and Carcosa you, you like to plug? I know you got that tour coming up up with Volvidinia, you know, with the Angel Maker and Carcosa. That's got to be a nightmare doing like two sets, two sets up in sets, which is insane. Saying yeah, saying is just anything else you would like to plug? Uh huh. Yeah, I'll mostly just plug that tour. Uh, I think it's it's going to be really fun. It is going to be a lot of work for me, but. Thankfully, I'm doing two different things, so it might kind of even out. But yeah, come check it us. Ch come check us out live, uh, U.S. and Canada, the um, Suffer Forever tour, which is Angel Maker, Volvidinia, Falsifier, Carcosa, and Awaken Providence. It's going to be super fun. Tickets are on sale now. VIPs are on sale. They're moving pretty quick. Uh, but yeah, grab your tickets while you can. We're we're going all across the U.S. and Canada. Yeah, I'm going to try to hit up that the Atlanta date. I think it's going to be awesome. It's going to be fun. So, yeah. Everybody, Johnny from Angel Maker and Carcosa, see you next time.